welcome you to the capacity filled Mizzou Arena here in Columbia, Missouri for number seven, Kansas against the Tigers. The Kansas Jayhawks have started three of three from the field. Langford's got three miles, hit a three, Simeon hit a two to start things off. And the Tigers have started all one with Dan Bonner, Kevin Harlan, and the Tigers getting it off to McKinney, who was picked up by Miles. Missouri has lost two consecutive games, and here is a turnover, and they go ahead. And then Daly, Brian Daly, a senior, and starting today for Missouri, picks it up. Crowd favorite. He really doesn't play very much at all for Missouri. Jayhawks coming off a couple of big wins. Kansas State Wednesday, Oklahoma State a week ago. McKinney for three, and that is Missouri's first basket today. And this is a capacity crowd, as you mentioned, Kevin. They just really want to explode, and Kansas got them awfully quiet scoring the first three buckets of the game. Rather an easy fashion, unfortunately, for Missouri. And for Kansas, starting the senior Lee over J.R. Giddens. It's Simeon inside. Moody got a hand on it, and Glazer comes out with it. Nice job by Kansas that time to totally surround Simeon. He had a shot at the basket. It was close, but it wasn't easy. Kevin Young. And a rebound inside by Simeon, who had 20 rebounds against K-State and Lawrence Wednesday. Into Langford and crashes into the defense of Daly, and there's a foul. Kansas has already won a share of the Big 12 Conference. A win today, they win it outright. A loss today and a Missouri win in Oklahoma, and Kansas would be tied, and Oklahoma, by virtue of the head-to-head -head with the Jayhawks, would get the number one seed in the Big 12 postseason next week in Kansas City as Langford hobbles off the floor. And Langford, of course, one of their key players, the second leading scorer for the Jayhawks. You can see 15 points, three rebounds. He is a guy that makes plays. And one of the problems that Missouri has had this year is they just don't have playmakers. Driving hard to the basket is Langford. And he comes down, gets sort of tangled up with Klaza on the inside, turns his ankle. Langford is one tough guy, though. You expect to see him back. And Giddens at the line because he takes the place of Langford. So Giddens is in, and he has been struggling from the field, although he did a couple threes against K-State Wednesday. Daly is now out, and they brought in Thomas Gardner for the Missouri Tigers. Jason Conley coming off a double-double at Iowa State. Now snuck away inside, and J.R. Giddens is quickly hurt from Kevin, what Missouri is trying to do is spread the court to allow their guys to drive the ball to the basket, but they have had very little success with that strategy thus far. Excellent defensive effort by Kansas. Giddens going to pick up the foul right there, hanging on to Jason Conlon. Kansas beat Missouri by 12 points in late January. And we talked about the Kansas win over Kansas State on Wednesday, and Missouri coming off an 18-point loss up in Ames against Iowa State. This is Gardner. Plays it with the rebound. McKinney found traffic and plays it for three. Plays is a guy, Kevin, who can shoot that three like all of his Missouri teammates. He hasn't shot it well this year, but if he can get the ball to go down from three, teams cannot play off of him, and he'll be able to drive to the basket. He's got excellent skills taking the ball to the goal. So Kansas jumps off to an 8 nothing lead. Now it's 11-6 with KU there. And Simeon kicks it for Giddens for three. And a rebound by Kraza. And now Giddens has gone four of his last 27, shooting three ball for KU. It's Kraza against Moody in the double by Simeon. Boy, Kansas really doing a nice job scrambling in their man-to-man -man defense. Missouri not noted as a particularly good passing team. Didn't react well to the double team. Wayne Simeon coming off two career games. Boy, Klazer's gotten about every rebound so far from Missouri. The Tigers doing a great job blocking off. Klazer with four rebounds early in the game. The Tigers' problem is they've got to put some points on the board. He's young on top and picked up by Simeon. They've got Miles and both Simeon on McKinney. Klazer. And Jason Conley carving his way for two. Conley trying to be very aggressive. You've got to give some credit to Klaza on that play. He took the ball in the lane, drew the defense, and was able to dump it off to Conley. Kansas beginning this game four of seven from the field. 
Giddens in for the injured Langford. Moody to Miles. And now Michael Lee looking for Simeon. And it's off Missouri with the shot clock at 16 and a timeout. It's the quarter showdown. The Missouri Tigers, the Kansas Seahawks, this afternoon on CBS. CBS Sports College Basketball Coverage is sponsored by Mazda. Always the soul of a sports car. The new singular, raising the bar. And by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Call 1-800-RENT-A-CAR. Pick Enterprise, we'll pick you up. Kansas by three, they've led by eight with Dan Bonner, Kevin Harlan. Thank you for joining us. Let's talk about the Jayhawks. What makes them go? Well, what makes them go is their three, their big three, three of their four seniors. These guys have been integral part of the Kansas program for four years. And of course, we're talking about Wayne Simeon. His number's very impressive, an outstanding career. Keith Langford, a clutch player throughout his career, and Aaron Miles, great ball handler, great passer, great penetrator. Key thing with these guys, though, is their toughness, and that sort of characterizes this Kansas team. And now State Farm covers the court with today's lineups. We've got Simeon Moody, Lee Giddens in for the injured Langford. Story on that in just a second with Miles. Missouri with Brown Grimes, Gardner Conley, and Jimmy McKinney. That's on the floor right now for both teams. Jason Horton not playing today. He was suspended for a game against Kansas for conduct detrimental to the team. Langford in the locker room having the leg looked at. He started. We'll get more on that in a second. And Miles. That's a two. Miles really has shot the ball so well this season. Improved his numbers across the board and it really makes him such a threat. Always a great passer. Always a great penetrator. Now you've got to play that jump shot as well. Missouri has started this game three of seven from the field. And with Horton not in the lineup, this is a tough matchup for Missouri because they're really lacking their best ball handler. Conley gets Wiggles in the lane there and scores the two. But this is a tough team, this Kansas team, to go up against without your point guard. Sasha Khan checks in for Kansas momentarily. And there's Miles Moody. Dropping it in for the double team, Simeon, who sees Trampin all afternoon, every game he plays. And out of bounds, and Kansas will have it. There's Bill Self in his second season at KU, another 20 win season for him. And Quinn Schneider has uh, had a difficult season, to say the least. He comes in with his team 14 and 15 overall, and 6 of 9 in Big 12 conference play. And in a critical game like this for his program, he's forced to suspend Horton, his point guard. Might add that it was for on-the-court activity. Giddens for three and a miss right there. And that is a Kansas foul. Our officials today, Jim Burr, Steve Olson, and David Hall. We've already seen an upset in college basketball today as top-ranked and previously unbeaten Illinois losing to Ohio State as McKinney comes inside. And way outside, Brown for three for Missouri. Brown the best percentage three-point shooter for the Tigers, and what a nice job by Missouri to rally back from being down 8-0. It's a 10-2 run for the Tigers. As we're tied at 13, Conley inside, and they get it with Gardner. Great and this is Missouri's first lead. Great transition basketball. Missouri really on the attack after Kansas scoring those first eight points of the game. Of course, it also this Missouri run coincides with Langford going out of the game. And Giddens in there, and Giddens has not hit a shot since he's been in and been hit a couple of times on the defensive end. Here's Miles. All-time assist leader at Kansas. Fourth National League coming into today. Giddens. Getting by Conley and a two-point shot, and he finally hits, and that's a good sign for KU. Boy, it sure is, particularly the fact that Giddens doesn't settle for the three-point shot on that occasion. The pump fake and dribble has himself a nice wide-open shot and knocks it down. Some of the numbers early in this game. Kansas is led by as many as eight. Nice move by McKinney. Cork screwing in and gets a foul out of the Kansas defense in this tie game. Missouri was very concerned about the Kansas ability to get up and down the court, but what a nice job by Conley to get the ball up, up on the board, and then you literally saw four Missouri players get to the ball or close to the ball before they finally tip it in, and nobody from Kansas by the board. And Missouri is already up four 
in the rebounding category, 7-3 in this game, and Jimmy McKinney is at the free throw line, a 74% free throw shooter for the Tigers. Sasha Khan picked up his first foul minutes ago, seconds ago, and here's McKinney. And again, Kevin, we saw Keith Langford turn that ankle, and he's not on the bench, he's gone into the locker room, and the longer he's gone, I think the more concern you have to have if you are a Kansas fan. Miles and Simeon are out. Khan has been taken out as well. Jeff Hawkins has been brought in. Moody is back in there. Lee remains. Giddens. And they brought in freshman Darnell Jackson from Oklahoma City. And now Glenn Dandridge will come in for the Missouri Tigers and take the place of McKinney. Missouri now going to show some pressure. The Tigers have done a nice job defending Simeon early in the game. Simeon's out of the ball game right now, but Kansas may be a little guilty of trying to force the ball in there. It's rebounding numbers you talked about. Key there is Kansas is not getting anything on the offensive boards. Hawkins the junior, Lee the senior. Kansas led by the five points of Langford, the five points of Miles, and a great move inside by Lee. But they can't get it to go, and now a four-on-two. Prune takes it to the rip. That's a charge. Boy, you could see that coming from half court. Nice job by Hawkins in there to confuse Brown. Marshall Brown, a freshman from Austin, Texas, taking it in, and Missouri by two over Kansas over 26 points per game and became one of only six players in NCAA Division I history to score more than 3,000 points. His great play made him a first-team All-American. Which other Naismith Award winner was a consensus first-team All-American in 1990? Now play Naismith trivia for a shot at a million dollars. Text the word PLAY to 26222 on your wireless phone. You'll get 20 questions for 20 chances to win a trip to the 2005 NCAA Men's Final Four and a shot at a million. Coming up next on CBS, one of the greatest rivalries in all sports is J.J. Redick and the sixth-ranked Duke Blue Devils head to Chapel Hill to take on Roy Williams in second-ranked North Carolina. It's coming up next on CBS. Get complete college basketball coverage at cbssportsline.com. And remember, fantasy baseball is now available for everyone from beginners to experts. Click on fantasy baseball at cbssportsline.com. Dot com with Dan Bonner, Kevin Harlan. We still have no word yet on the injury that we saw earlier on the Kansas Jayhawks senior from Fort Worth. Keith Langford. And I still don't spy him, Dan, on the bench, so he's still back in the locker room. No, I, I think we talked to Bill Self before the game, and he talked about the importance of that number one seed in the Big 12 tournament. That J.R. Giddens fumbles it away. And one of the reasons why he thought the number one seed was important, if they can get, if Kansas can be the number one seed, then that means if they advance to the championship game, then Oklahoma and Oklahoma State might have to play one another. And so you don't, that means to win the championship, you don't have to beat Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Good point. Plus, he doesn't like a potential matchup in the first round if you're the number two seed, possibly against Texas A&M, who's playing pretty well right now. Langford Miles at five apiece to lead Kansas. Five from McKinney leads the Missouri Tigers. They were on. Missouri was a 12-2 run. Coming back from eight down. A long-range three-point hit. And that's down by Jason Conley, who shoots 37% above the arc. Now a 17-4 run for Missouri over the last five and a half minutes. And Missouri's getting a lot of it done from three-point range, where they shoot only 28% in Big 12 games. Great pass by Moody. Hawkins couldn't hit, and here comes Les Plaza from Lithuania. Gardner, into Young, and a Moody foul. Thus far, the pace of this game, Kevin, has been such that Missouri not really missing the point guard. They're running up and down the court, and Gardner doing a nice job here drawing the defense. That's an excellent play to get himself stopped. You see a lot of guys leave their feet and get the charge, but he gets himself stopped, makes a nice, a nice pass to Young. Moody picks up his first foul, and speaking of the junior from Kingston, Jamaica, Kevin Young, a guy who is, since he's entered this program, Dan has gone from 330 pounds as a freshman to now about 260 as a junior, and his game has shown the improvement. Which sure has. They really get a nice inside combination in there, in addition to Klaza from Kalen Grimes and Kevin Young. Those two guys, they figure if they can get them to combine for double figures and points and rebounds, then they're in pretty good shape. 
Now Missouri has their biggest lead. Kansas is led by as many as eight. Missouri has right now in the midst of their biggest lead at six. Here's Moody picked up by Plaza. They've got McKinney on Miles. Good tough defense. This is a spot where you really miss him. A guy like Langford, who likes to put the ball down as a great slasher. Really a guy who can get the ball to the goal. Shot clock is down to five, and Miles with the great fake on Klaza. Outside, Hawkins for the goal! What a shot! <laughs> he was practically in the Kansas bench. In fact, he fell back into the Kansas, or the Missouri bench after he made the shot. Wow. There's Gardner. And now McKinney. Seven points by Conley, leading all scores for Missouri. Jimmy McKinney. That's nearly an impossible shot. Pretty good defense by Hawkins right there. McKinney just rising up over top and sh shooting the ball into the basket. A great shooting performance early by the Missouri Tigers. Kansas has made four threes. Missouri has made three above the arc. And here's Moody with the move by Plaza and spoon feet Simeon. And that is a Kansas foul inside. Earlier, Keith Langford going down on this drive with an injury. And he he lang landed and got tangled up with Klaza. Klaza drew the charge on that particular play, and Langford just got tangled up with him, and it looked like he turned one of his ankles. Although we have received no word on what his injury is at this point. Christian Moody picks up his second foul for the Jayhawks. That's the shooting in the game you see so far. Missouri's at their last six, and that pass is a little bit high as Conley was looking down low. And that's something that Missouri hasn't done too much of, and Quinn Snyder, that's got to make him pretty happy, and I mean turn the ball over. In particular, they haven't turned it over in situations where Kansas can take the ball down the court and get an easy basket. In Missouri's loss to Texas, or excuse me, to Iowa State, 30 of Iowa State's points, half the points in the game were the direct result of Missouri turnovers. Missouri's turned it over five times, Kansas four turnovers so far. Aaron Miles, a Darnell Jackson screen. He just came off the Bill Self bench. Lee for three and uncovered. Simeon digs inside, but Kevin Young digs a bit deeper. Now Gardner to Conley. Conley out there with McKinney. We got Gardner and Young and Klazer. That's the Missouri Five. Kansas with Miles and Lee and Hawkins with Simeon and Jackson down low. Conley. Almost didn't want to pass the ball, hesitated, and out of bounds off of Kansas. Well, of course, we told you before, with the uh, star freshman from Dallas, point guard Jason Horton out, puts a little bit of a crunch on the Missouri Tigers, uh, out for just this game, suspended for conduct detrimental to the team. And it, it was not an off-the-court incident. Uh, you know, a lot of times those kind of things happen. Everybody figures they're doing something out of the community, but it was something within the team on the practice floor. Kansas minus six in rebounding. Lee vacuums it in. Simeon has scored just two. Miles has five, and that one rimming out. Jackson inside is fouled. They had Young down there and Conley, and they're going to put it, I think, on Conley. Tiger foul on number two, Conley is first. That's the first on him. Kansas coming in. A road conference record of five and two. Missouri at home has played okay, 13 and four overall this season. And one of the things that Missouri's done here, they beat Oklahoma on this floor and they beat Gonzaga. So this is a Missouri team that is certainly capable and usually when they defend pretty well and they shoot the ball pretty well, they can be very dangerous and they've done both of those things early in this game. Young is out. Dandridge has come back in the game for Missouri. And Russell Robinson has taken the floor for the Kansas Jayhawks, taking the place of Jeff Hawkins. Of course, defending well and shooting well, just about anybody's successful when they do that. But this is a Missouri team that has really struggled to shoot the ball this year at the bottom of just about every category in the Big 12 in terms of shooting. And so when they shoot well, put some points on the board, they can really cause some problems. Only one player in the game with two fouls. That's Moody. Here's Brown, McKinney into Clayson. That's where Clays is most effective. Getting the ball on the inside, spin into the basket, drawing the foul. Jackson for Kansas picks up the foul. It's Missouri on top, 23 to 19.
Kansas began 4-5, led 8-0. Missouri came storming back in a 17-4 run. And the most impressive thing about that summary that you just saw there is Missouri, a team that shoots 28% from beyond the arc, Kevin, 4-5, of five, and a team that shoots 42% overall, shooting 57% early in the game. It's an interesting game indeed. This is border war between these uh, <laughs> two teams. Again, a look at uh, Jason Horton, who is out. His brother Daniel Horton is also off the University of Michigan basketball team. For yeah, but uh, the one thing that we need to stress about Jason Horton, this is an internal team matter. This is not something, that, not a problem with off-the-court activity or some sort of behavior uh, within the university or in the community. This is strictly within the team. Talking to Coach Quinn Snyder yesterday, he said they just need to get Jason Horton on the same page as everyone else. We've had two ties. We've had a lead change in this game. Kansas has gone 3 of 11 since starting 4 of 5. And Wayne Simeon has been scoreless the last 12 minutes of this game. He is one of the favorites for the National College Player of the Year. Well, particularly given the last two games he's had, Kevin, when combined in those two games he scored 57 points and had 32 rebounds. So to hold him to two points, 13 minutes, almost 13 minutes into this game is an outstanding job by Missouri. Robinson to Miles, a missed shot right there. Conley comes up with it. Here's McKinney with Clays on the wing. And Clays are the leading scorer and rebounder for the Tigers. Big rebound by Wayne Simeon, collecting his third this afternoon. Clays have thought he got fouled on that play. Missouri really likes to try to get the ball into him. That's a turnover, the fifth for the Kansas Seahawks on four assists. And Missouri, five assists on five turnovers. Bill Self very upset with the way his team has played right at the moment. They're really struggling in the half-court offense. Now they drop back into a 3-2 zone. Again, a lot of teams use the zone successfully against Missouri because in the past they just have not shot the ball very well. Plays uh, to Gardner to Brown. Kansas used his zone effectively to rally against Missouri in their first game. Gardner, it's a three. And the Missouri Tigers have built their biggest lead this afternoon over the seventh-ranked Jayhawks, 27-19. Russell Robinson has a Jackson screen. Miles trying to work around it. Now it's Jackson inside. Simeon with the rebound and a foul, and it goes inside on Jimmy McKinney of Missouri. Kansas with a win will win this conference outright, but here are some of Dan Bonner's projected seeds. Well, and you have to remember the old Esker. I mean, Illinois lost today, but I see Illinois, Kansas, Wake Forest, North Carolina as the number one seeds. And then you go down the list. Here's Oklahoma as the top number. Oklahoma State is the top number two seed. Kentucky, Duke, Boston College, and so on down. And this is where you have your S curve. It's a good looking S. Good looking S. Backwards S, but that's what the, that's the way they describe it. Galindo Gal yeah. Gal yeah. in the game gets fouled. <laughs> but the, Gal the, the interesting thing about that is Sorry, I think that Illinois three. losing Start today is doesn't first. really affect it's Illinois' it's status as one of the number one seeds. Now, if they lose in the first round of the Big Ten tournament, that might. But maybe it affects their status as the top number one seed. Be interesting. We've got the Duke North Carolina game coming up after this one. And so now it's North Carolina with an opportunity not only to sew up the ACC regular season title to beat their big rival in Duke, but also to move into number one in terms of the polls. Robinson lead. Giddens is back in with Galindo, Miles, Lee, and Simeon. Plays it comes back in for the Missouri Tigers out there with Conley, McKinney, Gardner. And now, they've Gal also brought in, uh, back off the bench, Kevin Young. Galindo is a guy that comes in the game because he's really capable of shooting the ball from distance. And so sometimes they put him in the game when they're trying to stretch that defense, and they need to stretch the defense. It has been surrounding Simeon inside. Gardner right across the lane and finding two. Langford is still in the Kansas locker room with the injury, and we have not gotten any word from the Kansas bench as to his status. But with him in there, it was an 8-0 lead. And with him out, they have struggled. It is a timeout by the Jayhawks. Boy, just great defense. We talked about the defense against Simeon close to the basket. This is defense far away from the basket. Great job by Conley denying the ball another Kansas turnover. 
We've had a 16-point turnaround in this first half, and moments ago, Kansas coach Bill Self pleading with his seventh-ranked Jayhawks. Well, I don't know that I would call that pleading. Pleading isn't done usually with that much intensity. Bill Self really getting on his guys. Not a lot of energy by the Kansas Jayhawks after they got out to that 8 nothing run. They may have thought this was going to be pretty easy. It's been anything but. McKinney for three. What a shot by Jimmy McKinney. Kevin, it's amazing. This is a team that simply does not shoot the ball well from three-point line. McKinney made that with Gibbons right in his face. He actually got knocked down. Missouri has gone six of seven shooting threes. They've got their biggest lead of the afternoon right now, 32-21. It's Giddens. Boy, a lot of standing around on offense by Kansas. Miles, shot clock is at 10. Galindo picked up by Klaza. Shot clock at four. They got a fire with it at one. And Galindo with the miss, and Simeon with the ball. He's off in a huge collision. Giddens and Jason Conley. And Conley picks up the foul. Boy, there's a couple of guys going after the rebound. Conley, I don't think, ever saw Giddens. Giddens never saw Conley. Now, here's McKinney. You talk about some great shooting. <laughs> McKinney bounces off the scorer's table after he shoots the ball himself. Oh, boy. He can't do that, can he? Jimmy McKinney can do that and has. He's got 10 points to lead all scorers in the game. Five for Langford, who's not even on the floor. Miles has got five. Simeon has scored two. Boy, Kansas, they got a point-blank range shot. Not able to get it to go down. 61% shooting for the Missouri Tigers. McKinney. And Look at the diving plays on it's off of the Missouri Tigers. Kevin, that's not going to show up in the scorebook anywhere, but by diving and knocking the ball out of bounds, Klaza prevents Kansas from getting out on the fast break. They're ready to go, but Klaza knocks the ball out of bounds. Now, Kansas has to throw it in against the set Missouri defense. That is an outstanding hustle play. Dandridge has come in the game with Klaza and Young and McKinney and Gardner. That's the Missouri five. Simeon over Young, and a big-time hook Simeon. off the baseline by All-American Wayne Simeon. And one of the few times that they've been able to get the ball to Simeon in a situation where he hasn't been surrounded. So Kansas is shooting 38%. Missouri is shooting 58% in this game. Plays it. Kansas stays with the zone. With offensive rebound by Plaza, who is fouled. Galindo is in there. And Galindo, the freshman from Newark, picks up the Jayhawk foul. Wayne Simeon trying to make his presence felt on the Kansas offensive end of the court. That time, nobody came to double team. It's very hard to guard Wayne Simeon if you're going to let him operate one-on-one. -on -one. Those are the numbers on Simeon. But the main thing is we've all worked with nearly 16 minutes through this first half and Wayne Simeon has only attempted five shots. They've done a nice job keeping the ball out of his hands and then forcing him to give it up once he catches it. Young leaves and freshman Kalen Grimes from St. Louis comes in for the Missouri Tigers. A look at Linus Klaza who leads all rebounders with seven. He's got four points and Jimmy McKinney has been the star. Three of four for Missouri. Two of two above the three-point arc and a game high ten. You mentioned Young going out of the game, Kevin, and Young, of course, is the guy mainly responsible for the initial defense against Simeon. Klaza and his teammates have helped him out, but Young has done an outstanding job against Simeon. And Klaza is a guy who goes to the free throw line a lot. There's a 71% free throw shooter and knocks it down right now. Free throw shooting in the game, Missouri has gone six of eight. Kansas has gone four of five. That is free throw shooting today. Plays an outstanding game. You saw six rebounds. He's really played well so far, but Missouri needs to make sure they continue to get the kind of defensive effort that we've seen so far in this first half. Make it difficult for Kansas to shoot the ball. Hawkins is in. There's a pass. Miles to Galindo. Rebound by Gardner bumping into Giddens. Kansas really has had no inside attack yet in this game. This is the season for the Missouri Tigers.
They know they're going to have a tough time in the postseason going anyplace. So this is their championship. So you think you know a lot about NCAA basketball? Play Naismith Trivia for a shot at a million dollars. Text PLAY to 26222 on your wireless phone. You'll get 20 questions for 20 chances to win a trip to the 2005 NCAA Men's Final Four and a shot at a million with Dan Bonner, Kevin Harlan. We're on Norm Stewart's court at Mizzou Arena in Columbia. And coming up, Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, and Sports Illustrated Seth Davis will take you through a very busy weekend of college basketball and a very interesting day already as the top-ranked team in previously unbeaten Illinois has lost for the first time this season to the Buckeyes of Ohio State. And, Kevin, I think that makes this upcoming NCAA tournament more and more interesting. There just is not a lot of separation among the top teams in the country. Here's Gardner at the free throw line. He knocks it down. Foul problems for the teams. For Bill Self in Kansas, Giddens has got two. Simeon has got a couple fouls, as does Moody. And for Quinn Snyder over the Missouri side, just two on Conley, and that's about it. Biggest lead for the Missouri Tigers. They were down by eight. In fact, eight nothing to start the game, and Quinn Snyder has built a 13-point lead. This team has done a great job playing on the defensive end, really disrupting what the Jayhawks of Kansas are trying to do. Kansas generally does a pretty good job of combining their inside game and their outside game, but they've been forced mainly to the perimeter. Galindo to Simeon, and that is a welcome sign for the Jayhawks. Simeon. Goes 2 of 5 to start. He's got 4 points. Make it 6 points in the afternoon. That looks very efficient by Kansas. Ball inside to Simeon. Just catches it and shoots it up over the top. Kansas stays in the zone. Drives. Simeon will not let go of his position inside. And then on top of that, grabs a rebound. Kansas is minus 2 in rebounding. Simeon really working hard for position on the inside against Grimes. Missouri has gone with a smaller lineup. Jimmy McKinney guarding Miles. McKinney has a game high 10. Simeon from outside. Gardner goes after the loose ball. Kevin went after the loose ball, but that's a shot that bounced a couple of times before it got to the corner. Nobody chased after it, particularly nobody from Kansas. McKinney, Marshall Bryant. Dandridge climbing over the back of Giddens picks up the Missouri final. Simeon has continued to work hard on the offensive end. This time he just catches the ball, and that turnaround jump shot is about as pretty a thing as you'll see in college basketball. Simeon keeps his hands up, blocks the ball by Grimes. Again, pressures the shot without fouling, and then comes down with the rebound. Simeon not only leads the Big 12 in scoring, but leads the Big 12 in rebounding. Plays in and Young come back in for Missouri. At the free throw line is Jeff Hawkins for the Kansas Jayhawks. Five of seven shooting free throws this season. And Hawkins is a guy who has been a valuable reserve for the Jayhawks yet this year, but he has been pressed into a little bit more duty today because of the injury to Keith Langford. Went to Kansas on an academic scholarship as a freshman. Now, of course, a full-fledged member of this basketball team and puts in two... Free throws, and the Jayhawks have brought the deficit to single digits. And the zone defense has caused Missouri to slow down just a little bit. Gardner again. Wow. Thomas Gardner, a sophomore from Portland, Oregon, who played at the same high school as Miles and Lee at Kansas, has come in with a big-time performance. Missouri has gone 7 of 8 shooting threes this afternoon. It's Hawkins for three. He's second this afternoon. You know, if you're Bill Self sitting over there on the Kansas bench, you have to wonder whether Missouri could make seven of eight shooting threes if there was nobody on the court, if they were just practicing. Kansas has gone four of 11 shooting three-point shots today. Gardner again, feeding the McKinney for three. <laughs> this is an amazing shooting display by a team that shoots 28% from beyond the arc in conference play. But the big question for Missouri is putting together a complete game. Giddens missing from outside. Miles gets the offensive rebound. And now has the mismatch on Clayson. Well, the ball has got to go inside to Simeon. There he draws the foul from Young. 
Missouri. Eight three-point field goals, and this is a result of excellent ball movement. The ball goes inside to Plaza. He kicks it back out, and then a terrific pass by Gardner over to McKinney. Wide open three, and the Tigers have been knocking them down. Conley leaves, and they bring in freshman Glenn Dandridge from Goochland, Virginia. Here's Wayne Simeon at the free throw line, who has gone 50 of his last 52 at the free throw line. He is the fifth best free throw shooter in the Big 12 Conference. You just saw the big three for Kansas and where they stand and what they've done. Langford again. We're told now will not return. It's his right ankle, but the severity of the injury, we don't know. He has had all kinds of injuries over his career. Mulan Yang will, uh, Yang will come in now for the Kansas Jayhawks. He is from California. With the Jayhawks trailing Quinn Schneider and his Missouri Tigers by 10. Now let's take a look at our Applebee's neighborhood favorite, Kansas face St. John's in the 1952 championship. Center Clyde Lavellet finished with 33 points and 17 rebounds to lead the way for the Jayhawks, who never trailed and route to their first national championship with an 80-63 win. You see Danny Manning there on the foreground. He led that uh, terrific 1988 team to a Final Four and, of course, the national championship with then-coach Larry Brown. And now Danny Manning, the director of basketball operations at Kansas. We had a good, if not injury-filled, NBA career, but a guy who has come back to his alma mater, lives in Lawrence and loves the town. His family is there, and I think he fancies himself someday at being a coach in college basketball, head coach. Kansas goes back to the man-to-man -man for the last minute and 11 seconds of this first half. Here's Klaza, who leads all rebounders with seven. There's McKinney, who leads all scorers with 13, voted by Jeff Hawkins. And 42 points in the first half against a really good defensive team from Kansas is a excellent showing. It's a walk. And it was on the sophomore Thomas Gardner of the Missouri Tigers. I remind everybody again that Jason Horton, the freshman point guard for Missouri, suspended for this game by Coach Quinn Snyder, an internal team disciplinary matter. A kind of ball handling miscue by Missouri. Miles can't hit. Belinda with the big offensive rebound. And here is Hawkins. Yawn with the screen. Galindo inside on Klaza. One of the very few offensive rebounds we've seen by Kansas today, and they convert that into a basket. Here's McKinney and Klaza and then Yawn, and the two collide and hit the deck. And a foul with five seconds left in our first half which has seen Kansas lead by as many as eight, and the Missouri Tigers lead by as many as 13 points as the Tigers have hit eight three-point shots. Eight of 10 for Missouri above the arc. Yon picks up the foul. Klaza will be at the line. Klaza has one of those three-point shots, and it was the ability to hit that three that caused Nwan to come out to try to guard him, and Klaza showed you his skill with the ball. Puts it down, draws the foul. And Clayson, Missouri last beat Kansas in March of 03 in the semifinals of the Big 12 tournament. And the last Missouri win in Columbia against KU, January of 01. So it has been a while. Gardner. Yeah. The Missouri Tigers got 24 points on three-point shots. Led by the sharp shooting junior from St. Louis, Jimmy McKinney, who has a game-high 13. We've already seen one highly ranked team fall today. Will Missouri make it two?
At halftime in Columbia, 43-34, the unranked Tigers over number seven, Kansas. Nothing to Kansas, the Tigers by nine at halftime. Next weekend, conference championship weekend delivered by UPS brings you excitement from Conference USA. The Pac-10, the Southeastern Conference, and the Big Ten. It's all here on the home of the NCAA Championship CBS Sports. Immediately following, of course, the NCAA Sunday Selection Show. It's win and survive. And speaking of Survivor, Thursday on that show, what's aboard a boat is about to change. Everyone's life on the island. And one tribe struggle to stay alive comes down to a no-holds-barred fight to the finish. Don't miss a new Survivor. It's Thursday at 8, 7 Central on CBS. No one for Kansas in double figures. Jimmy McKinney of Missouri has 13. The Tigers by 9 in Columbia at the half. CBS Sports College Basketball Coverage is sponsored by Autotrader.com. The best place to find a car is also the best place to sell one. Autotrader.com. Old Spice keeps you cool and smelling great. And by Allstate. Are you in good hands? With Dan Bonner, Kevin Harlan, in the first meeting between these two teams in late January, Missouri led at halftime in Lawrence and by as many as 11. The Kansas came back and won by 12, and they had Keith Langford then. They will not have Keith Langford in the second half today. As you look there, right at the bottom of your screen, Keith Langford, Langford in a collision with Clays that injured his left ankle. We're told it's a severely sprained left ankle. He's not going to be available for the rest of the game. And so here we go. Here's Clays with McKinney and Young and Gardner and Conley. That is the five for Missouri to open up the second half. Hawkins out there with Miles in the Kansas backcourt. They got Simeon and Lee, and there's a drive by Gardner, and he puts it up and in. Christian Moody is the fifth Jayhawk, and Missouri by 11. And Gardner has now scored 14 points in the game, doing a nice job driving the ball to the basket. Missouri had success attacking Kansas, both offensively and defensively, in the first half. Gardner with the game high, 14 points. They go inside, and it was kicked. So, Dan, what about the second half for the Jayhawks? Well, I think one of the things that Kansas is going to have to do is get the ball inside to Simeon. He only took, the, but took seven shots in the first half. You could see there Kansas trying to get the ball into him. But Missouri has done a nice job keeping it out of his hands. So, be interesting to see how this goes in the second half. Missouri is plus eight points in the paint. Moody with the left hand, and the rebound is yanked down by Gardner. That was Moody's first shot of the game. Moody only played... Nine minutes in the first half, didn't take a shot, only had one rebound, so they need more contributions from him in the second. Moody guarding Clayton. Rebound by Lee, and here comes Kansas, and again, the Jayhawks minus eight points in the paint. Miles by McKinney, Lee screen, and a shot over Gardner, and a Kevin Young, Missouri Tiger rebound. McKinney, Clayton for three. Offensive rebound by Young and a foul on Aaron Miles of Kansas. Allstate brings you the numbers halfway through this game. 50% shooting from Missouri, eight three-point shots. And the points off turnovers, you notice that Kansas only has five points off turnovers. Missouri with 14. That's a real turnaround from the last couple of games for the Missouri Tigers. Tigers have not beaten Kansas since the 2003 tournament and not here in Columbia since 2001. It's McKinney. Nice stop on a dime. McKinney and Gardner both today have done a nice job keeping the Kansas defense back on his heels with those penetrating forays to the basket. Kansas needs to do a better job defensively keeping those guys in front of him. Miles Lee for three. Plaza with the rebound. He has now snared eight rebounds for the Missouri Tigers today. Tigers by 13, equaling their biggest lead. That's a missed three by Gardner. He's been hot above the arc. And a whistle inside. Goes on Plaza. Jimmy McKinney has done a nice job shooting the ball from three-point range, but there, the drive to the basket, the great jump stop. You notice the defense step back, and that gives him enough room, and he knocks it in the goal. So the Jayhawks jumped off to an 8-0 lead. Missouri came back on a 17-4 run in the first half. Tigers eventually went up by 13. We've had two ties and a lead change. Kansas has done a great job, or excuse me, Missouri has done a great job pressuring the ball today. 
And there's a foul. It's on Young as Moody was trying to establish position down low. If Kansas wins, they win the Big 12 regular season title outright. If they lose, they finish in a tie with Oklahoma. But because of earlier loss by the Jayhawks to the Sooners, Oklahoma would get the number one seed in the tournament at Kemper, which begins in Kansas City next weekend. Young, McKinney, Gardner, Conley. Oh, what a play by Jason Conley. The Missouri Tigers have their biggest lead of the afternoon over seventh-ranked Kansas. Defense is what it all starts with, but then you have to be able to transition to offense. There's Jason Conley highlighted, and watch what happens as they get the ball. He's able to get down the court, and as he gets down the court, they are able to find him. Gardner with a nice job penetrating into lane, and then Conley finishes, and Kevin, don't forget Jason Conley was the country's leading scorer as a freshman at BMI. So he knows how to find the basket, and that's another guy that knows how to find the basket, Wayne Simeon. He's the first Jayhawk in double figures with 10. Great assist on the play. And it's Conley, Klaza, Gardner with the ball, making a move and one too many steps and a travel. As Miles was defending for the Jayhawks. Well, a lot of questions remain about the Jayhawks after today. Like, will they get a number one seed in the upcoming tournament? One of the things certainly working in the favor of the Kansas Jayhawks is that their RPI and their schedule strength has been very high all season long. Their Miles falls down dribbling the ball, which is the only reason he didn't get a travel, and then calls a timeout to avoid the turnover. Bill Self with a lot on his plate, including Langford out for the game with an injury. And down at Columbia, 49 to 36. Near the end of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team to honor their determination and outstanding play. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Chevy, an American revolution with Dan Bonner, Kevin Harlan. We're in Columbia on Norm Stewart Court, the Mizzou Arena. Seventh-ranked Kansas has trailed a good part of this game by as many as 15. Missouri stays in that man-to-man -man defense. Hawkins for three. Plaza with his ninth rebound and seven points. You know, I know Missouri is making it difficult, but if you're Kansas, I think Wayne Simeon has to at least touch the ball every time down the court. Good point. Jimmy McKinney leads all scores with 15 for Missouri. Simeon, the only Jayhawk in double figures with 10. Nice knock away by Aaron Miles. And that is where it has to start for Kansas on the defensive end. Of course, it's tough to play defense when you're chasing the other guys. And Missouri scoring 16 points off turnovers. A lot of transition opportunities for the Tigers. Conley with Giddens defending. Three for Conley. Plays a tap it out of bounds. Off, oh, let's see, off of Missouri. One of the few times this afternoon that we've seen the Missouri Tigers shoot a quick, long three-point shot. When trailing at halftime this season, Kansas is 5-4 and, and leading 16-0. Now, one of the pro another problem that Kansas faced in the first half, in addition to losing Langford, is Moody had to sit down early with those two personal fouls, and that offense just seems to flow a lot more smoothly with Moody in the game. Simeon with 10, plays the defender. Foul on Clayson. See, and that's the situation where I'm just what I'm talking about. Simeon plays that can't guard him one on one, particularly out there. He's got to get some help. Second foul on Linus Klaza. Nice moves by the All American Simeon. CBS Sports coverage of college basketball continues after this message. Tomorrow, it's a great night of television on CBS, beginning with new episodes of Still Standing and Listen Up. Then don't miss. A special viewer's choice, Everybody Loves Raymond, followed by new episodes of Two and a Half Men and CSI Miami, plus The Late Show with David Letterman. Tomorrow right here on CBS, America's Most Watched Network. And don't forget, after this great rivalry game, we got another one for you. Number six, Duke, at number two, North Carolina, with Dan Bonner, Kevin Harlan, and Columbia. Tigers have led most of the way by as many as 15 over the seventh-ranked Jayhawks, up now 49-36. to 36.
And again for Missouri, this has been done without their point guard, Jason Horton. And getting some point blank range, a rebound by McKinney. And now Missouri is plus eight in rebounding. There's a Kansas foul. The Missouri Tigers really got it going in the first half, Kevin, with their three-point shooting. They made eight three-point baskets in the first half. Kansas tried man-to-man. -man. Kansas tried zone. Nothing seemed to work against the Tigers that made everything they shot. In the second half, they've been doing a much better job driving the ball to the basket. Moody just picked up his third foul. Gardner is fouled as he was cocked and ready to fire. And this one goes on Miles. So Miles picks up a foul there, and that is a second on him, and Moody has just picked up his third. He now has uh, an issue with the coach, but he stays on the field, on the court, and they're going to let him continue to play. But Langford is out with the left ankle injury, will not return. Thomas Gardner at the free throw line. Portland, Oregon High School Player of the Year. Here comes Lee, and there goes Hawkins. Kansas really desperately struggling for offense right now as Missouri has done a nice job sort of bottling up Simeon inside, and no one really else has, no one else has really stepped up to take any of that burden that they lose when Bill Self lost Keith Langford to that ankle injury. It's been Missouri 8-2 in the second half. Only two Kansas points. After halftime, Gardner has got Miles. Great pass into J.R. Giddens, who got on his pogo stick and gets two. Giddens, a guy noted for his three-point shooting, but he has been struggling from out there and is gradually learning how to help the team even when the three isn't going down. That's a nice job to get inside the defense. Here's McKinney, Lee defender. And picked up by Lee, and Kansas has numbers, the defending Gardner on the lead. Boy, that's a great job by Gardner getting back. Giddens for three. Moody puts it back up and in. Indispensable this season has been the play of junior Christian Moody. Well, you know, he went out in that overtime against Texas Tech, and Kansas lost, and he missed the next two games, and Kansas lost. So Moody is a the guy they really like to have on the court. That was just a nice play in transition. Gardner has 16 to lead all scores for Missouri. Here he is again. Locked and loaded from three. Young battling for the ball. It's ruled that he knocked it out of bounds. Marshall Brown will come in for Kevin Young. Missouri trying to keep the pressure on. They've done an excellent job pressuring the basketball. We showed your graphic before. The backcourt of Kansas really has not been a big factor in terms of offense in this game. Kansas is shooting 38% for the game. Miles wiggling his way in. That's a tough, tough shot, though. Pretty good defense by Missouri. Missouri shooting 47% from the floor. Gardner. And foul as he was up. And this will go on J.R. Giddens. And Langford is back on the Kansas bench, but we're told will not return. A third foul put on J.R. Giddens. It's a left ankle, which was twisted in the early going. Now, you can't see them now because they've laid them on the floor behind the bench. But when Langford came back out to the bench, Kevin, he was actually on crutches. And Bill Self, he's just struggling to find a combination that is going to be able to play defense and put some points on the board. The window is going to come back in for the Jayhawks. And those three-point baskets by Missouri in the first half have really opened everything up. In the second half, we mentioned the Missouri guards faking from three, drawing the Kansas defenders, and then penetrating into the lane to draw fouls and score. The window comes in for Moody. It's Dandridge. Defense by newly instated Hawkins, who comes in for Giddens with the three fouls. Simeon guarding Clemson. Wayne Simeon picks up a Kansas foul. That's his third. Plaza has gotten Moody in foul trouble. Moody usually the guy that guards the best inside player for the other team, and Plaza just pushes his way to the basket. He's ruled that Simeon never had position, so he picks up the foul. We mentioned plays. He came into this game, Kevin, with 174 free throw attempts, and you have to take the next three guys on the Missouri team and add them together to get that many free throw attempts. 
Tigers have led by 15. Kansas jumped off to an 8-0 lead. McKinney will take a breather. Gardner comes in. Gardner has a game high. 16 points for Mizzou. Cleza has a nine rebounds in this game. And now he's got eight points, and that's how the big three for Kansas have fared so far. Well, they've done a, eight. Missouri's done a nice job against Miles. Langford, of course, out of the game. He scored five early points, but Miles has simply not been a factor. Lee with the miss, and Cleza with the rebound. He's now got ten. Gardner. Conley. Guarded by Hawkins. Win another hand-checking foul as once again you see the Tigers take the ball on the printer and drive it to the basket. Kansas really having a difficult time, particularly in this second half, defending that dribble penetration, and that has to be a matter of concern for Bill Self. Plaza gets it in, and Dandridge, the uh, freshman, has it. Leaves on him. Brown. Galindo now trying his luck against Plaza on the inside. Conley for three. Piles with the Kansas rebound. Ahead it goes to Michael Lee. That hustle by Gardner with the steal for Missouri. Where Gardner has just had a marvelous game. Tremendous energy, tremendous intensity. Andridge missing the three. Plaza with his 11th rebound and fouled by Jeff Hawkins of Kansas. Missouri with a 12-point lead. They've led by double digits a good part of this game. And Kansas just hasn't gotten anything done in transition. Lee not able to handle the pass, and that is just great, great hustle by Gardner to steal the ball. You know, Gardner's one of those guys who a lot of Missouri's play really depends on his intensity, his aggressiveness. He's a guy, if he's going out there diving on the floor, making plays like that, then the Tigers are generally having pretty good success, and that's certainly what we've seen today. Galindo will check out for Kansas. Darnell Jackson has come back in the game. I said before, a win for Missouri. This will pretty much be their champion. This is, this is the game they point for on their schedule. In fact, they have not beaten Kansas in a couple of years. Overall, and in four seasons here, it means a lot. Miles, Hawkins, Miles, three ball. Good. And that's a big basket for Miles and for the Jayhawks. And just like that, Kevin, it's a 10-point game again. This is a critical stretch, I think, for Missouri. And Gardner. And how many plays has he made today? In the second half, once again, just pulling his way to the basket, using his tremendous size advantage against both Miles and Hawkins. Foul on Kevin Young, trying to guard Wayne Simeon. Thomas Gardner, the sophomore from Portland, Oregon, with a game-high 18 points as Young picks up his third foul. But Gardner, of course, we mentioned it back in the first half, the same high school in Portland as Aaron Miles and Michael Lee at KU. Couple years in back of those players, but obviously very familiar with them. Kansas recruited Gardner, but he chose Missouri. You see, even on defense, he's using his size to great advantage against the smaller miles. Simeon. Big hit for Wayne Simeon, who now has 12 points to lead the Jayhawks. That turnaround jump shot is almost automatic, Kevin, despite the defensive pressure. Missouri has gone 8 of 16, shooting the three ball this afternoon. Very effective in the first half. A few more misses here in the second. Gardner for three. And interference. And the three ball for Kansas, 5 of 18. A timeout taken. Number one, Illinois has fallen. Number, can number seven, Kansas trying to stay above water here in Columbia. CBS Sports College Basketball Coverage is sponsored by Chevy and American Revolution, supercharged for 2005. Monster, is today the day you get the big payoff? Monster, today's the day. And by new Budweiser Select, brewed for a crisp taste that finishes clean. Be selective.
This game important for the Kansas Jayhawks. If they win, they win the conference regular season title outright, and they keep that number one seat. If they lose, Oklahoma becomes the number one seat in the postseason tournament next week. Well, if they lose, down they go, and they end up here, and Oklahoma goes up, and the key there is then they've, they've got to face maybe Texas A&M, and Bill Self isn't happy about that, nor is he happy about the prospect of having to beat both Oklahoma and Oklahoma State to win the Big 12 Tournament Championship. But I'm sure he's not thinking about any of that right now. His team is has really struggled here, although they have improved defensively in the second half. You see Missouri shooting only 33%, but Kansas con continues to struggle on offense. Gardner leads all scores with 18 for Missouri, 12 for Wayne Simeon. Missouri has had one field goal in the last six minutes. And interestingly enough, Kansas hasn't really been able to do much with that. The lead's still 10. Simeon has hit four of his last five. Hawkins. Shot clock is down to seven for Miles. Picked up by Gardner. Screened by Simeon. Miles for three. Jason Conley. Brown for three. And a rebound by Lee. Saved by Jackson. And triggers it out for Miles. Three on three. We have players down at the other end. That's why you only see a three on three matchup. Get all tangled up. Look like they're playing a game of Twister. <laughs> and there's a foul, and it is on the Missouri Tigers. And the intensity has really been something. Right there now in the middle of your screen, guys rolling over one another. That looks like what they do over in the Hearn Center now. It's wrestling. <laughs> Kalen Grimes picked up the foul. That is the first. Moody is back in. Jackson Lee. Hawkins and Miles to trigger it in. That's the Kansas five. Gardner Conley, Grimes plays it McKinney. It's the five for Missouri. That's tremendous defense by Missouri. Plays it. McKinney, great find in Gardner. Missouri has just been a step quicker all day long. Lee plays his double-team defense, really paid off. And this is the second time that Kansas has done a job. Watch this inbounds pass. It comes in here, they get a trap, and then a steal. This is the second time that Missouri has disrupted a Kansas inbounds play. You get the steal right there, the knockaway clays, it picks it up, and then down on the other end, Gardner taking the ball hard to the basket, something Gardner has done all day long, particularly in the second half. Marshall Brown has come in for Missouri. Simeon is out, Michael Lee is out. Here's a shot by Kleza, and Giddens gets it. Giddens just comes in the game. Booty's in there. We well, wonder where the offense is gonna come from Kansas with this particular lineup in the game. Langford, of course, out with that ankle injury. Simeon on the bench getting a breather. Miles has been basically ineffective. Moody. An all-white uniforms underneath that basket to get that rebound. And rebounding today, plus six for Missouri. And now the Missouri Tigers, they need to be careful that they continue to attack aggressively. You don't want to pull it back out, try to run time off the clock. Grimes. Got to make good decisions, though. We've had two ties and a lead change in this game. Miles was three of nine. Hawkins for three. Rebound, Plaza, who grabs his 13th rebound. To Cambridge ahead on the break. And off of Missouri, out of bounds, with 9.02 in the game. Let's take a look at the landscape of uh, college basketball conference at large. Some of your projections. Well, Kevin, of course, there's 34 at large bids, and I really think the seven biggest conferences will probably get 27 of those, and that leaves seven. Now, let's take a look at these non major at large possibilities. Teams like Vermont and Holy Cross, they did advance to the semifinals of their tournaments today. Davidson and Old Dominion, these are teams who in the non-conference part of their schedule did what the NCAA said they should do. They played good teams, they played on the road. They didn't win all those games, 
And then they dominated their conferences. You saw Davidson there. Davidson was undefeated in the Southern Conference, but lost in the Southern Conference Tournament. That's a team that did everything the selection committee asked them to do. And I'll be very curious to see if they are rewarded with an at-large bid, even though they didn't win their conference tournament. Miles is out. Russell Robinson is in, and here he goes, penetrating inside with a foul. Talked about Vermont and Holy Cross. There are their scores. Holy Cross scores going to overtime. Vermont with an 11 point win. Let me point out that uh, the America East, uh, which is where Vermont plays, has never had an at large team. The Patriot League has never had an at large team. And the Southern Conference has never had an at-large team since the field expanded to 64. So it would be an outside shot for the Wildcats of Davidson, but certainly you have to say, uh, based upon their play during the season, they earned it. Plays have picked up his third foul. 71% free throw shooter freshman Russell Robinson from New York. Moody taps it away. Saved by McKinney, or did he? Nope, Kansas no, he has didn't. it. He tried, he tried to throw it off Hawkins, but Hawkins was flying into the bench, and McKinney missed it. No one in this game has more than three fouls. But there are some prominent guys that do have three. Like Young and plays it for Missouri. Like right, Giddens and Simeon of Kansas. That's a great pass on the inside. Simeon is back in. Young was defending, and Young picks up the foul. Young has done a pretty nice job throughout the game, preventing Simeon from catching the ball in ideal position. Simeon has caught it down a lot in there, but defending Simeon, you want to try to push him as far out of the lane as you can, that time pushing a little too aggressively with the official standing there watching. But for the most part, they have defended Simeon pretty well. Simeon 12 points and six rebounds as Young will take a breather on the Tiger bench for Quinn Snyder. Free throw shooting today. The Jayhawks have gone 9 of 11. Missouri 13 of 18. Kevin, then, the interesting thing about it is Missouri has done a nice defensive job against Wayne Simeon without sacrificing their defensive play against the other guys. They have done a nice job throughout. You know, as we said, Langford out of the game, and of course that has been a burden for Kansas, but nobody else has really gotten it going offensively. There you get a look at Langford with those five points, Miles, only three of nine shooting. And Simeon at the line. Two of two, now three of three. But all that having been said, Kevin, if he makes this shot, it's a nine-point game. Kansas not out of the game by any stretch of the imagination. Nine times, Kansas has trailed in five games they've had in five minutes within the five minute frame they've won six of those games and there is a foul and Robinson picks up his first now Robinson is trying to move his feet and trying to draw the charge the rule there is that you have to have both feet on the floor facing the dribbler the officials ruled that Robinson did not so Kansas has had this position before the nine times they've trailed in the final five minutes. They've won six of those games. In two of those games, they had deficits of 11 points in one. And one of those wins was against Missouri. Ian Lawrence in late January. McKinney. One of the ways that Kansas was able to come back and beat Missouri, Missouri and Lawrence was they forced turnovers and they shot 57% from the field. Neither one of those things are happening in the second half thus far today for the Jayhawks. McKinney has just tied his season high with 16 points. He's got 17. Gardner for Missouri leads all scorers with 20. Miles will come back in. Hawkins will leave. 8-16 to play. At halftime, the Missouri Tigers led by nine. The lead has been as high in the second half as 15 points. 49-34. J.R. Giddens scooping it to Robinson. Miles and Moody and Giddens again. A great reaction by the Missouri defense. Moody with the screen and Miles inside with a pretty play. Something we haven't seen much of Miles today. That is the ability to put the ball down and get into the lane and make a play. Turnovers even at 10. Plays it. 
And Conley to McKinney. A two over Robinson and a foul on Robinson. Boy, that's a break for Missouri. That really bailed him out right there. That was a tough shot. On the floor. Miles trying to manufacture something inside. He's in double figures with 10 for his Jayhawks, who have won two straight against the Missouri Tigers. Some of the numbers through this uh, second half, 36% shooting for Kansas, somewhat of a surprise. Really a surprise. This is a Kansas team that shoots 48% on the year, and Missouri doing a great job defending him. They've held Wayne Simeon pretty much in check, and nobody else has really hurt them. Of course, it has hurt Kansas that Keith Langford injured that ankle early in the game and went out. Hasn't been back in. We won't see him back today. They miss him. Indeed, they miss him. Two shots attempted in the second half by Wayne Simeon, which is somewhat of a surprise. He's got 14 to lead the Jayhawks, 20 by Thomas Gardner, leads everybody for the Missouri Tigers. Well, one of the things you saw on that graphic was that Kansas is 5 for 20 shooting three-point baskets. And so since Kansas can't get anything going from the perimeter, the defense just gets tighter and tighter around Simeon on the inside. And here is McKinney. Just named on the Big 12 All-Academic Team. Played for Vashon High School in St. Louis, which was always one of the top 10 rated high schools in the country for the basketball program. And he was there. Down by 11. Kansas with the ball. And if Kansas is going to make a move, they need to get started quickly. Miles is 4 of 10. Going to Simeon, who was sandwiched inside. He was in a straight jacket with the defense of Kalen Grimes. He picks up his second personal foul for Mizzou. One of the problems with lobbing the ball inside to Wayne Simeon is as that ball is in the air, the defense gets a chance to collapse on him. So he was fortunate to draw the foul, but the ball was lobbed up in the air. He jumps up to get it. When he comes down with the ball, he's surrounded. Kansas now 12 of 14 at the line. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> He's got to be as good a shooting big man as there is in college basketball. Uh, that's one of the reasons he's so difficult to defend, because if you follow him, he's going to the line and knocking him down. Now this, speaking of defense, Kansas really needs to turn it up defensively. They've dropped into the 3-2 zone. Nice steal by Giddens. Oh, my! McKinney with the foul. And the Jayhawks to within a 61-54 reach. This is the closest Kansas has been in the second half. Just because you're playing zone doesn't mean you have to be unaggressive. Giddens doing a nice job stepping into the passing lane, a little bit lackadaisical on the pass, and he's able to go down and convert it to a three-point play, and just like that, we've got a six-point ball game. Now Kansas with a 1-2-2 press. Plays it to McKinney to Conley. And they drop back into the zone. Plays it inside, surrounded by Blue, and outside he hits Conley. The drive and a travel. Wipe it away. Well, he really took a lot of st <laughs> steps right there. That was a good play to attack the zone. Conley just needed to dribble at one time. Kevin Young comes in for Brown. He's got four fouls, does Young. And those tied and lead ties and lead changes all occurred very, very early in the game. This is as close as Kansas has been since the early part of the first half. Jayhawks led 8-0. An 18-4 Missouri run. Tigers eventually went up by 15 in this half. Simeon, triple team. That's a tough shot right there. 14 rebounds for Linus Klazer. You just expect Simeon to make them all, however. 10, Missouri has four turnovers in the last three minutes of this game. And the lack of turnovers, Kevin, was something that really helped them in the first half. Going into Plaza. Another try. Moody comes up with it. Five turnovers and a little more than three minutes for Missouri. 
Miles. Giddens for three. And Moody with a great offensive rebound. Keeps it alive. Miles thought about three. Now pops the three and nails it. What a shot for Aaron Miles. An 8 nothing Kansas run. And they're back in business with five and a half to play in the second half. The seventh ranked team in college basketball, the Jayhawks, coming from 15 down. Now to within three in the last five minutes. And it's hard to score from the field or otherwise when you're turning the ball over, and that has been Missouri's problem over the last five minutes. Missouri led it 49 to 34, their big lead of 15. Kansas has chiseled away at that lead throughout the second half. Craig Gumbel in New York. We'll get you back there. But first of all, Kentucky and Florida are in the final seconds, tied at 52. Let's join Ian Eagle and Jim Spinarkel in Gainesville. Kentucky 52, Florida 52. Roberson trying to put the Gators up by one with 15.2 remaining. And here they go, no timeout as of yet. And the officials talking it over. Roberson thinks there's a timeout. Just what the sub it looks like. They did. One point lead for the Florida Gators. We'll keep you updated. Let's send you back to Columbia, Missouri, Kansas, and the Missouri Tigers, Kevin Harlan and Dan Bonner. This by Young, another rebound by Wayne Simeon. He has led Kansas with 16. Game high 20 points by sophomore Thomas Gardner of Missouri. Here's Moody. Giddens. Into Simeon. Baines into Klaza. Knocked away by Young in a Missouri foul. And the Tigers better be careful, particularly Young. You don't want to pick up a technical foul in this situation. Young's got five. Here comes the lob pass into Simeon. They've got three guys around him, and as the ball is lobbed up in the air, watch Clays to get down quickly. Young comes over and gets called for the foul. That was a pretty good job getting in good defensive position. A tough break by the Tigers. You can see why Young was upset a little bit. But that is, it's been very difficult for Kansas to lob the ball into Simeon because Missouri has done a great job closing on the big guy. So by the time he catches the ball, he's in trouble in there. Now, however, he's going to get to go to the line and shoot two. Once again, Greg Gumbel in New York. We'll get you back to Columbia, but 11.4 remaining in Gainesville. Let's rejoin Ian and Jim. 53-52, Florida leading Kentucky as we take a look at the game reset. Each team with one timeout to work with. A foul by Florida would put Kentucky in the bonus, right? Possession arrow favors Florida the last three meetings. Here in Florida, they have been close throughout and have mirrored what we've seen this afternoon. But you look at the situation for Kentucky in enough time, and Billy Donovan knows that there's enough time to be creative right now with 11 seconds left in this basketball game. If you're Kentucky, you want to put the ball on the floor if you need to one or two times to try to attack, try to go to the towards the basket. Don't be afraid to kick it out to the perimeter, but you have to be aggressive. Don't wait, in my estimation, for the last three seconds of this game to try to be your hero. Shot clock is turned off. Final eight seconds. Gators looking to hold on. Down to four seconds. As a bookie, he'll fire the three. It brings up, and it's over. Florida has made a statement. It's a day for the giant trees to fall. Illinois fell earlier today. Number three, Kentucky falls at Florida. Let's send you back to Columbia. Rejoin Kevin and Dan. Back, they beat Oklahoma State, and they beat Kansas State. Jayhawks trying to win the Big 12 regular season title outright with the win today. Missouri trying to beat Kansas for the first time in Columbia since January of 2001. Last beat Kansas did Missouri in the semifinals Big 12 tournament in March of 2003. Langford is out for Bill Self and the Jayhawks because of a twisted ankle. Jason Horton, the freshman point guard starter for Missouri is out. 
disciplinary action out just for today's game. The, one of the interesting things about that graphic that we just showed you, Kansas six and three when trailing by when trailing in the last five minutes of the game. Keep in mind that last year they were 0 and eight when they trailed with five minutes or less left in the game. So they have shown a much better comeback ability this season. Linus Klaza has eight double doubles this season. He's at the free throw line right now for his 11th free throw attempt. Klaza is 6 of 10 shooting free throws with his 14 rebounds and his 9 points. Coming up next, the beauty at Chapel Hill, Duke in North Carolina on CBS. Missouri has led most of this game. Klaza has got his ninth double of the season. Plays has done a nice job keeping the pressure on the Kansas defense with, the, with his ability to handle the ball and penetrate to the basket. Big free throws. Under five to play. The lead is back to four. And the crowd is one to their feet. The ground is matched up inside against Simeon. That's quite a mismatch. Galindo is in for Kansas. There's another freshman, Russell Robinson, across the lane to the other freshman, Galindo. That's great another. pass by Robinson. That's a great job by Galindo to get to the basket. Klaza is really conscious of going to try to help out against Simeon in the penetration. Klaza went to Simeon. Nobody was on Galindo, and he was able to convert. That's a great job penetrating to the basket and finding the open man. The zone for Kansas has really slowed Missouri here in the latter stages of this half. And the shot clock is at 10. It's lost inside. Another Missouri turnover. And they've had a bunch in the last stages of the second half. Six in the last 10 minutes for the Tigers. Boy, where was he throwing that? Conley. To Klaza and a Galindo foul. A couple of freshmen at the other end. Russell Robinson to Galindo and the Jayhawks to within two. Let's check the CBS Sportsline stand of the game for complete game statistics. Go to cbssportsline.com. And the stat is three-point shooting. You notice Missouri, eight threes in the first half, none so far in the second. It's a two-point game, and Jay Onks will put the freshman Robinson with Giddens, Galindo, Miles, and Simeon. Missouri with Klaza at the line. We've also got Marshall Brown out there, Gardner, McKinney, and Conley. Just get the idea that the Tigers are going to get some opportunities from the free throw line here in the last three minutes and 42 seconds, so their ability to convert may end up being the difference in this game. Ben Snyder in his sixth season in Columbia. Coming up next, Duke in North Carolina. Snyder played college basketball Duke. Simeon the rebound. You have to say that Quinn Snyder and the Missouri staff certainly had his team well prepared today. They have done an excellent job executing their game plan throughout. Go inside to Galindo. Outside for the tie. Giddens good! What a shot! And the Jayhawks have come back to tie it at 64. It was last tied at 15. Well, it's some comeback by Kansas. It is just an amazing job. It wasn't all at once, Kevin. It's very gradual. They sort of gradual comeback. They sort of snuck up on Missouri. Leading by 15 points, Missouri has lost the lead. And a travel. And it's on Gardner, who has a game high 20 points. Now, this last three pointer is really interesting because nobody follows Giddens out to the corner. He's out there now. You see him. He comes into the screen. Nobody even noticed him out there. And that's a young man who struggled with his three-point shot, Kevin, as you pointed out, but he was confident to take that one. Giddens is now five of his last 32 three-point shots. But none bigger than that one right there. 
Miles, a Simeon screen. Galindo for three. And Conley the rebound. You know, I think in that situation, Galindo is not the guy you want shooting the ball. Bill Self, I think, a little upset over there on the Kansas bench. Simeon's got to handle the ball in these situations. Maybe not shoot it, but he's got to touch it to draw the defense and create those openings. There's Gardner to Brown. Kansas has stayed in the zone, and it has been effective. McKinney. Oh, that's a tough shot. That's what Missouri has not been able to do, get the penetration that they got early in the second half against that zone. That is just an outstanding play by Jimmy McKinney. Jimmy McKinney has a game high, 21 points, six of seven from the field. A big shot here to give Mizzou a two-point. As you can see, no fouls to give with the Tigers on top of Kansas, 66 to 64, 203 to play in the second half. Kansas with only one timeout remaining. You remember Bill Self had to call timeouts in bunches, it seemed, early in the game to try to get his guys motivated and going again. And whatever they've done, whatever he did, it worked because Kansas has come out with much more intensity here in the second half. They've created some turnovers. Even without Keith Langford, they've been able to claw their way back into this game. Now, however, do they have the juice now that they've tied the game to get over the top? This is where Kansas misses Langford with his late game heroics. The window. Giddens, who tied it before. They yeah, tied it before. Now Missouri's taking the lead. Can Kansas come back? We got Gardner and Miles. Miles in for the time. Hazel comes up with the loose ball. That's great defense. Miles, ball dropped out of bounds. He shot it off the back, the underside of the backboard. Just no place for Miles to go here. This is great defense. Simeon doesn't get loose on the inside. You've got to credit McKinney for cutting him off. Miles got too deep to find anybody on the outside. Now Kansas has to get a, another turnover. Dangerous pass. McKinney. What a hit! From Jimmy McKinney. Missouri stays man to man. Nice pass, Miles to Galindo. And Galindo's done a nice job cutting down the lane, and that's where he's going to be most effective. He doesn't need to be shooting those threes at this point. He needs to be finding spaces close to the basket. They're so worried about Miles, he's going to be open. Miles has five assists. Simeon leads Kansas with 17, 13 for Miles. Game high, 22 points from Thomas Gardner. The Missouri Tigers have led most of the game in holding on to a two-point lead. Look at all the Kansas defenders on this side of the court. And as they come, as they try to get back, McKinney penetrates into the lane. Nobody's still covering Gardner. So McKinney draws everybody. Everyone was over on one side of the court to start with. McKinney's penetration forced all those defenders to him. Nobody picked up Gardner. An excellent play by Jimmy McKinney. Robinson and Miles out there for Kansas with Galindo, Simeon, and Giddens. Gardner. Brown, McKinney, Plaza, Conley out there for Missouri. 17 on the shot clock. And play tough defense without fouling and make sure you rebound the ball when it's shot if you're the Kansas Jayhawks. Into Plaza, guarded by Simeon, foul on Wayne Simeon. Ball is on Russell Robinson. Let's see. It is on Simeon for a fourth time. Robinson was defending as well. Boy, that's a nice job by Missouri to punch the ball inside. A bad foul by Simeon right there because Klaza actually was off balance and was, as he caught the ball, he was moving toward the free throw line. It was going to be hard for him to turn and get a shot. So Simeon, as you saw, has picked up his fourth personal foul. Klaza with his 15th free throw attempt today. He is 10 of 15. And he's got a double-double for Quinn Snyder. But this is a really big one right here. Miles. Lost it. Bit of a force there, Kevin, by Miles, trying to make something where nothing really existed. Oh, 
Well, we said earlier in the game, this is like Missouri's championship game of the year. It certainly gives Missouri the opportunity to move to 15-15. If they can get a win in the Big 12 tournament, they get a berth in the NIT. Right now, hovering over Kansas and leading by four with 22 seconds to play. The leading scorer and rebounder in the Big 12, Wayne Simeon, along with Linus Clays, are two players of the game in recognition for their determination and outstanding play. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund, Chevy and American Revolution. Missouri has led most of the game by as many as 15 points in the second half. Kansas came back to tie. Right now, Missouri by four. You have to go for the quick steal or the foul. Missouri has not beaten Kansas on this floor, which came over from the old Hearn Center since 2001. There's a quick foul. It's on Hawkins, who is on Thomas Gardner. The Kansas win today. We give them the Big 12 regular season title outright. They lose because of their head-to-head -head matchup with Oklahoma and the loss to the Sooners. Oklahoma would get the number one seed in the Big 12 postseason, which begins this upcoming weekend at Kemper in Kansas City. And keep in mind, it's been an interesting day already in college basketball. Illinois going down, and now Kansas potentially going down so two teams that a lot of folks are talking about as number one seeds in the upcoming NCAA tournament struggling here in the last weekend of the regular season. Dan, it was the three-point shooting of Missouri in the first half that gave a lead that they built to 15 in the second. And while the three-point shot has not been falling in the second half, it's been their free-throw shooting and their ability to get to the free-throw line, which has been huge for the Tigers in the second half. Langford, of course, uh, went out early in the game. It's also their ability to get into the lane with dribble penetration, particularly early in the half, that really bothered Kansas. That is the 32nd free throw try by Missouri. Kansas has 18 attempts. It's a five-point game. Kansas needs offense quickly. Lee for three. Plains ahead, a hand on it. It's off of Kansas. And 7.7 on the game clock. It's loose and Giddens in a timeout. Counted for two, 3.7 to play. It's a three-point game. The Hawks alive and kicking in Columbia against their rival, the Tigers. Next Sunday, who's in, who's out, who's playing whom and when? Get it first and get it fast with Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, Seth Davis, Jim Nance, and Billy Packer on the Basketball Championship Selection Show. With number one, Illinois losing earlier today. Number seven, Kansas in trouble. What is going on in this final regular season <laughs> weekend of college basketball? We talked about Missouri at the free throw line. Ten of their last 14 points have come from the strike. And for Kansas, there's very little time left in the game. You've got to get a steal here. McKinney to inbound. Klaza has it and pushed by Russell. Robinson. Two and a half to play. Rose has been huge at the free throw line and in this game today, 11 to 16 at the strike, 14 points, 14 rebounds. You know, Clays is a guy, we talked about Horton being benched for today's game to see if he can get himself readjusted to the team concept. Clays wins the game with that free throw. But Clays is a guy, earlier in the season, Quinn Snyder did the same thing with him. He benched him to try to make sure that everybody was on the same page in, in terms of playing together as a team. And he has responded with a tremendous effort. We are close to seeing the third top ten team fall in this final regular season college basketball weekend. Kentucky has lost, Illinois has lost, and it appears number seven, Kansas, will lose. And now it's official as they storm the court in Columbia. For Dan Bonner, Kevin Harlan saying so long from Missoula Arena.
The Tigers have pulled the upset, beating Kansas for the first time in two years. Led by the 23 of Thomas Gardner. Coming up next, it's Duke at North Carolina. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship.